I know I said I wasn't gonna vlog this week, but I just had to show you this pretty acai, acai bowl that I made. I've never made one before, and I don't think it'll be very filling or great for my body in particular, but I just had to try it. It looks so good. <laughs> I had to show you guys something really exciting that's happening this week. We're getting a deck built. Yay! Look at all the progress they made today. It was supposed to be done today. It's not done today, but that's okay. I'm extremely pleased. <laughs> we still have to stain it, so I can't use it for a while, but I'm, I'm really thrilled. It looks amazing. Our old one was like splintering and falling apart. <laughs> Hey guys, I guess I lied. I said I wasn't going to vlog this week. So I didn't introduce the vlog or anything and it's already Thursday, but I'm just too excited to talk to you guys about what I'm reading every week. It's just so fun. So maybe I'll just make it like a mini vlog. So it's Thursday, August 10th, and I just got an exciting notification from Pangtan Academy, my free Korean Discord learning server. They are, I think starting their soft reopening process, which I'm so excited about. So yeah, I'm really excited. I just got that notification today. Maybe that's why I'm in such a great mood and I just decided I had to come talk to you guys. So I hit 50% in Bleak House, so exciting. And I'm loving it. I'm just loving this. However, I do need to read like, I don't even know, like, so I'm on page 478. And I need to get to page, let me see, <clears throat> 640, <laughs> 640 by Saturday. I don't think that's going to happen. I've just been having a lot of anxiety this week, I think, because I don't think I would have had anxiety if it was just Bleak House, because if I was reading three chapters a day, which I started the week doing, I would have been fine. However... Because I also need to finish Travels with Charlie this week before Saturday. <laughs> like at exactly the same time, I have to finish this and like almost 200 more pages of Bleak House. That's why I'm having anxiety. And I'm trying to control it and just tell myself it doesn't matter if something doesn't get finished. It's fine. It's not a big deal. And it helps that I've been able to listen to some of both books on audiobook, but there's just only so much audiobook listening I, I can do for these kind of books because they're really books that I want to have eyes on the page for. But as you can see, I'm really enjoying this one as well, Travels with Charlie. I'm loving them both. I feel like they're both going to be like 90 percentile books for me, which is why I'm just, I, I'm having a great reading week. It's just... I have too many goals. I can't read this quickly. Even yesterday, like I could have spent most of the day reading, but I was having so much anxiety that it was impossible for me to just sit down and read. So I just edited a video instead. Um, and I had a friend come over and I have a lot of work that I need to do this week. Yeah, so I don't know. I just boxed Kate to see how she's doing on Travels with Charlie. Um, and I'm waiting to see what she says because I don't know, maybe if she's behind like I am, we can postpone it a little bit. But regardless, loving these. So maybe I should tell you about some of my little notes in Travels with Charlie. So honestly, it's, the reflections on America are fascinating. Like there's talk in here about why and it, like the culture of mobile homes trailers that was fascinating if you guys are reading this with me so it says could it be that americans are restless people a mobile people never satisfied with where they are as a matter of selection the pioneers the immigrants who peopled the continent were the restless ones in europe the steady rooted ones stayed at home and are still there but every one of us except the african americans forced here as slaves are descended from the restless ones, the wayward ones who were not content to stay at home. Wouldn't it be unusual if we hadn't inherited this tendency? And the fact is, we have. But that's the short view. What are roots, and how long have we had them? If our species had existed for a couple of million years, what is its history? Our remote ancestors followed the game, 
moved with the food supply, and fled from evil weather, from ice and changing seasons. Then, after millennia beyond thinking, they domesticated some animals so that they lived with their food supply. Then, of necessity, they followed the grass that fed their flocks in endless wanderings. Only when agriculture came into practice, and that's not very long ago in terms of the whole history, did a place achieve meaning and value and permanence. But the land is tangible, and tangibles have a way of getting into few hands. Thus it was that one man wanted ownership of land, and at the same time wanted servitude, because someone had to work it. Roots were in ownership of the land, intangible, immovable possessions. In this view, we are a restless species with a very short history of roots, and those not widely distributed. Perhaps we had overrated roots as a psychic need. Maybe the greater the urge, the deeper and more ancient is the need, the will, the hunger to be somewhere else. Charlie had no answer to my premise. <laughs> uh, I just love it. Whenever he goes on these like really deep philosophical thoughts about America, and then he switches to Charlie's response, <laughs> you know? Um, so... Obviously, Charlie is his dog. I don't know. Did I say that? There's Charlie. <laughs> and there's Rosinante, his trailer traveling truck thing, camper van. So I just love this. So I, I kind of disagree a little bit because I know that Native Americans on the land, ind indigenous peoples, like they traveled from, like, it obviously it totally depends on which indigenous culture we're talking about. Each culture was very different. However, there were cultures that traveled throughout their land and they considered it like sacred land and they just knew that the land they knew the land so well that they knew where to travel for every season in order to get what they needed so even though they were like hunter-gatherer types they also loved the land that they were on and knew it that incredibly well that they would just travel to the part which had their resources that they need for the season so this is not entirely true for everybody. I mean, indigenous peoples in America are really unique in this way. I feel like I don't. I don't actually know about much about indigenous peoples of other parts of the world. Um, but I know that. I mean, maybe he didn't either. Maybe he didn't even know that much about indigenous cultures at all, and that's why he's saying this. But yeah, maybe he's not wrong about other types of people. I don't know. Steinbeck also spends a lot of time kind of talking about the changes that he's seen in America and kind of mourning some of the changes, but he's also like very self-aware. <laughs> he says, It is the nature of a man as he grows older to protest against change, particularly change for the better. <laughs> but yeah, he still is mourning certain changes, like the loss of local accents and localness in general because of television and radio kind of normalizing a certain standard of English, um, and yeah, like uh, mass produced food and things like that. Um, assembly line production of our food songs in language and eventually our souls. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really, it's so reflective. I'm just loving it. It's so, so good. As far as legendary readathon, it's going to have to be a second half of the month kind of readathon for me. Um, since I'm focusing so much on my buddy reads and read-along choices um, these first two weeks, but I'm really looking forward to, I did finally get the audiobook of Joan of Arc by Helen Castor, so I listened to a little bit of it, but I just need to spend more time physically reading it before I think I'm going to be able to really focus on that. And I'm planning to buddy read volume two of Attack on Titan with Tiffany, um, hopefully maybe this weekend after I finish my live shows I can maybe read that and um this is a book that Jenny mentioned that I want to read I did start listening to The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope and it's so charming like the main character is an author so it's just really fun to read from her perspective and I downloaded some nonfiction. I'm gonna listen to The Most Dangerous Game with Kevin tomorrow um, when we go to the doctor and I re-downloaded this because I think I'm just going to go ahead and listen to it. Um, I think my buddy reader will catch up with it later, but I'm just going to go ahead and listen to it. Um, and I've, 
been just kind of listening to traffic whenever whenever I can't focus on other things. It's kind of gossipy and fun, and it talks about the development of kind of media in America. So it talks about like Jezebel and Gawker Media and Ben Shapiro. <laughs> but yeah, let's see what else. What else, what else, what else? I've been listening to Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, and Tiffany told me she's gonna be reading this really soon based on my recommendation. I think she's going to love it. I hope, I don't know. I feel like she used to be more into long books that are like kind of slow. And so I feel like maybe it would actually be, maybe I should tell you this. It might actually be better for her to read it at a different time um, than now. Cause it is, it's kind of just one you have to enjoy at its own pace, you know? And I feel like right now long books are her kryptonite, just like they're my kryptonite. <laughs> so maybe I should tell her, oh wait. And uh, Tiffany and I started sharing library cards so that she could have access to all my libraries. So this is one of hers. <laughs> so you're seeing both of our checkout history. And there's Joan of Arc, which has to be returned, but hopefully, hopefully I can get back to that soon. Oh my gosh, they finished it. I don't know if you could see the steps down there. I'm not supposed to walk on it, I don't think right now, because we have to let the wood dry out and then we have to put sealant on it, but I just had to show you, I'm so excited. This fall, I'm gonna be using it a lot. Hello there guys, just curling my hair. I have two live events today. So I'm really excited. Yes, yesterday I think we had, yeah, yesterday was Friday. Um, I done really well with work this week. So that's really awesome. Um, but yesterday evening, uh, Tiffany's Patreon had a meeting about our favorite books read in July. And that was really, really fun. I always love her Patreon meetings. So I didn't bring you along for that. Oh, did I? No, I think I did. I showed you a short clip. Um, but I'll bring you along today for the live shows. I'm, I, I don't really, I feel like I don't really curl my hair right, but I do the best that I can. I'm definitely not a beauty YouTuber. <laughs> uh, I probably don't watch enough to really know how to do this kind of stuff, but I do my best. Um, so Travels with Charlie, uh, the Zoom call is going to be at 11 a.m. So I just finished that. It was so good. I'll share some quotes with you a little bit afterwards. I'm hoping to do a review because I know not everybody likes Zoom calls. Um, but I want to be able to share my thoughts with you guys because you guys left some great comments about it and about Steinbeck. I definitely need to read more Steinbeck. I loved, loved Travels with Charlie. And one of my commenters mentioned that the end of Travels with Charlie was really moving and they really hoped that I finished it. And wow, I feel like the whole book was really working up to the end of Travels with Charlie. Cause all throughout the book, he talks about how unwilling humans are to face change. And he specifically, you know, mocks himself and his age group you know, for it's being unwilling to change basically because they know how things used to be and that's just what they prefer. Um, so, but I feel like he said that several times throughout Travels with Charlie and I think it was all leading up to his last chapter. So basically, John Steinbeck travels all across America in like a specialty camper van called Rosinante with his French poodle, Charlie. And his observations about the states were all so interesting. And um, frequently, like I said, he talks about changes in America, changes that he doesn't like, changes that he feels like, uh, even though some things need to be changed, and he was like, even though it wasn't all great the way things were, he said he just prefers. Yeah, I'll, I'll get into some quotes kind of sharing that stuff. But all that to say, very, it was everything that I could have hoped that it would be and I didn't expect to love it this much just because I haven't read Steinbeck since high school and I just, I don't know, I guess really gorgeous writing, really, um, I didn't really have a taste for really great writing in high school yet because I was more interested in the content in the meaning and yeah, I just wasn't necessarily ready 
to hear all the perspectives of other people in books. I definitely read books differently now. Growing up, if somebody didn't write exactly what I believed, I would be like, I don't like this book. <laughs> this is not what I believe. But now I guess I just have a little bit more humility about these things. So, um, but not that he wrote anything in this book that I didn't agree with. I definitely agree with, you know, the main thrusts of his books. I mean, they're just observations about life. I can't really disagree with his observations. I might observe things differently. And he says that in the book. He's like, every traveler will see different things. So you can't really necessarily rely on my impressions. They're just my impressions. So he doesn't try to take a lot of really strong stances. He pokes a lot of fun at himself. It's literally just a travelogue for him and for people to enjoy who like his writing. So loved it. Uh, and now I'm gonna try to get a little farther in Bleak House before our Bleak House live show because that's happening in about 40 minutes and I'm still only in chapter 37 and I think I was supposed to be at chapter like 44. <laughs> so, and I'm, I probably will be the furthest behind out of the whole group. I know Victoria's a little bit behind still as well. Last night, I was a little ahead of her, but I only read Travels with Charlie last night and she probably read Bleak House. So she's probably really close now to the end. And I'm still in chapter 37. <laughs> still loving Bleak House though. I finally got to a point where I could listen to it, which is what is helping me finish things. Um, I finally, I, I just am really loving classics on audiobook ever since The Belton Estate, which I enjoyed fully via audiobook. I've just been like, you know what? Just enjoy things on audiobook. Even if, I mean, you could always go back and physically read them later. Like I did that with Jane Eyre. I discovered Jane Eyre on audiobook. And of course I didn't catch everything. But does that matter? No, I loved it. So I went back and reread it physically. And yeah, now I've reread it multiple times. So it's okay to read something on audiobook some of the time on the classics, even if you don't catch everything. That's what I'm trying to reassure myself about. <laughs> so in the live shows with Naomi and Jenny and us, uh, Victoria, are just so chill that I don't feel like I need to have some like amazing insight into the book. We're just enjoying it. So, and honestly, the others tend to have really good insights. Um, I have been reading a little bit of like chapter summaries, which is something that both Naomi and Victoria were doing earlier and I wasn't doing it because I was just, I was just trying to read it all physically and I was like, I don't even have time for chapter summaries. I'm just trying to finish it. But this time, since I knew I wasn't going to catch up and I was trying to read a little bit more quickly, I was like, okay, I'll just try some chapter summaries, and it was going fine. Chapter chapter summaries are great. I've just never really read them, but they're helpful. They're helpful. So anyways, that's kind of what's going on, and enjoying everything I'm reading this week so much. And I'll probably do my final update either tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> okay, but I'll take you along for our live shows and stuff. My hair actually turned out okay with just curl, maybe I'll just leave it curled like this, I don't know. I was gonna try to do like, yeah, something else with it, but maybe I'll just leave it. I, it doesn't usually look like this when I curl it. I don't know what I did differently today. <laughs> Cause a lot yeah. happened in this section. <laughs> yeah, a lot did happen. That was really a strength of his writing was that, like you said, he wasn't preachy about anything. He just shared what he observed. He was like very journalistic. Guys, that book club meeting was one of my favorites ever. And I'm so glad that we read Travels with Charlie. This was Kate's choice. I asked Kate, what's a short classic that you would want to partner with me for our book clubs? Cause Kate has our Patreon as well, which yeah, I need to join because I just love reading with Kate. I didn't join originally because I was like, I just do not have room for another Patreon. But you know, now Victoria has a Patreon and Tiffany has a Patreon and Kate has a Patreon. Everybody just has them. So if I don't always read along, 
it, it just is what it is. It's fine. <laughs> so I should really join because this was so great and talking with Kate and Stephanie was so great. So um, thank you so much, guys. I love you. Thank you for reading this with me and really love this book. Can't wait to share more. But now it's almost 1230. So I need to eat lunch and do some stretches. And then we need to I need to make my shopping list so we can go shopping and run by the library. Hey there guys, it's just a little bit later on Saturday and I just wanted to mention I just went through this cookbook called Love and Lemons Every Day. It's like a new cookbook um, by the author of the vlog. I think Love and Lemons is her vlog title and she does vegetarian recipes. Now, if, you, if you've heard me talk about food before, you probably know I have to eat a lot of meat actually, but I also need to eat a lot of vegetables and I really feel like this cookbook is great at making vegetable recipes that like actually really taste good and are satisfying. So I would definitely recommend this to any of you foodies out there and yeah, I, I'm really excited to make some of these recipes, so I thought I would just tell you about it. Alrighty guys, it's time for a book haul. We just went to the library, and I'm super excited about all the stuff that I got, so. Um, okay, I'm trying to find a place to put you, so that you don't just, like, fall. <laughs> it's not really working very well. I guess I'll just hold you up. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. So, first of all, we have Kuma 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 Bear, which is a manga that actually Tiffany, one of her subscribers, recommended to her because she was like, I like cute manga. <laughs> and we were going to both read it via Libby, but it turned out that on Libby it was the light novel and not the manga. So, she's going to see if she can get her library to order it. Meanwhile, I couldn't wait and I just ordered it from my library. So excited to try that. Um, I also, when I was looking for that, I just saw Kuma Kuma Chen's Travels and I was like, I have to see what this is about. I think it's just a kid's like story, like Japanese. I don't even know. I don't know. I just thought it has Kuma Kuma in the name. It sounds too cute. I have to, I have to try it. Okay, it's really hot. It's like, it's only like 94 today, but sitting in the hot car is still hot. Okay. And then I have a bunch of books from the library for for my library job. So Celeste Ng's Our Missing Hearts. These are all books that I'm doing content for my library on. And they all, honestly, they all sound good. I, my boss buys, most of, most of the books that my boss buys are on the New York Times bestsellers list. And then we have this really cool program called Zip Books, which allows patrons to order books that are not available through the library system. We have like a tri county system, so we usually can get books through that. But if there's a book that isn't available through the tri county system, um, then we can use Zip Books and it will come to us from Amazon. And once we're done reading them, we just turn them into the library and they become part of the library catalog. So it's a super cool system. But regardless, all the most of the books that Christopher buys are off of the New York Times bestsellers list. So huh, I thought somebody's waiting for me. Um, so this is A Thousand Ways to Pay Attention Discovering the Beauty of My ADHD Mind, a memoir by Rebecca Schiller, which sounds probably just like what it is. <laughs> so yeah. Um, there's that, and we have Lions and Shadows. Oh, so some of these books were books that we, they were, they had been just put into the library through various means, but had never been checked out within the first six months to a year of them being in the catalog. So this is one of those books. It was, I call it, we call them Lost in the Stacks, and we do displays of them at the library so that people find out about books that aren't getting that much attention, but that somebody thought they were worthwhile enough to print. So um, this is a classic by Christopher Isherwood. And he's talking about um, his life in London um, and all the writers that he knew there. Let me see if I can, I forget. Um, he, he was f contemporaries with W.H. Auden, Edward Upward, and Stephen Spender whose intimate friendships and cult of rebellion changed the literary identity of England in the 1930s, in London's Bohemia. <laughs> so a lot of school dropouts becoming writers and becoming cool. That's like what this is about. Um, and then 
Then I have a book I'm going to buddy read with Victoria, hopefully sometime this fall. I didn't expect it to come so quickly. The Never Ending Story by Michael Enda. I know that Jenny read a book by him for a K-pop blog. This cover is so gorgeous. I just love it. I loved The Never Ending Story as a kid. The movie, I was obsessed with it. So excited to try this. This would be a reread for Victoria. And I won't tell you what we're reading it for together. But you'll find out. Okay. Uh, and then the other book that I got was Traffic by Ben Smith. Which I've been listening to on audiobook. And I really wanted to get so that I could read the first couple chapters physically. So that I can sort of get my head anchored in the world a little bit better. I just love this cover. It's like the perfect cover for this book. Um, yeah, it's basically how people figured out what people were interested in. And catered to like... <clears throat> the worst part of humanity basically what makes people click things like porn you know stuff like that things or like celebrity sex tapes and um s like journalism about women and their experiences sexually like all these things that are like hmm i don't i things that the women like later regretted writing like but they did it all because their editors were pressuring them to get the clicks so fascinating I'm really enjoying this and I'll tell you more about it later okay so while I was just sitting here I read Kuma Kuma Chen's travels and this was originally published in Japan and I don't really know the art style I don't know it's like super minimalistic and they didn't do much with the typeface. I don't know. It wasn't like super pleasing to read in any way. So I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't really my thing. Hey there, guys. Well, it is later on Saturday. It's the evening now. And I've just decided to hop on and end this vlog because it's rapidly changing from a mini vlog into a full length vlog. And I don't want that. I just don't have the time for putting things together this weekend. So we're just going to end it here. I'm probably not going to finish anything else like tonight. So, uh, and tomorrow legendary readathon sprints are happening and I think I'm going to make a jump of progress on legendary readathon stuff. So I might as well just start my legendary readathon vlog tomorrow with the reading sprints. So I will talk to you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. Let me know down below um, what your favorite thing was in today's what your favorite part of this vlog was and I will really look forward to hearing from you because the comments are just my favorite thing. Honestly, my favorite thing about posting videos is your comments. So thank you so much for watching and commenting and I'll talk to you very soon.